welcome to the second lesson of the fourth unit. The title of the lesson is Becoming a Charismatic Communicator. The objectives of the lesson are define charisma, identify charismatic behavior, determine the role of body language, and overcome barriers. We've seen that leaders are made, not born. What about charismatic communicators? Are they made or born? Pause the video and write the continuation to the following statements. A charismatic person is. What a charismatic person does is. Now, drawing on the characteristics and behaviors you've listed, what can you say? Are they inborn or acquired? I have a feeling that you said that those characteristics and behaviors can be acquired and probably they are linked to the person's emotional intelligence. Olivia Fox Cabane demystified the charisma myth. In her opinion, charisma is a set of concrete behaviors that can be developed and perfected. In her own words, charisma presence depends on whether or not someone is exhibiting these behaviors. These non-verbal behaviors can help you become a great communicator and an inspiring leader. We have briefly mentioned them in Unit 1. Now it is high time we took a closer look at them. The good news is that you don't have to change your personality in order to boost your charisma level. You can develop the skill by practicing it consciously. What you should do to be perceived as charismatic is to show presence, power and warmth. Presence is a popular word at present and it emphasizes the importance of being focused on what's happening. So if you are communicating with your team, for example, and you are focused on the thoughts popping up in your head and not on what is happening at that very moment, on what somebody is telling you, you do not display presence. This will result in you being perceived as inauthentic and it uh, uh, get you disconnected from your team. Why is it so difficult to be fully present? Because of the distractions that are everywhere uh, right now. And probably the biggest distractors are your thoughts. Hence, mindfulness should be practiced in order to be in the moment and be fully aware of what's happening. Try to spot when your mind starts to wander in the middle of a conversation and bring yourself back to full presence. Every time you bring yourself back to the present moment, you reap major rewards. You become more impactful, more memorable and come across as more grounded. That will definitely help you make a strong first impression, but above all, keep that good impression throughout your entire communication. Presence should be displayed above all when listening to others. It is this presence that helps your receiver feel good and really valued. In that moment, what you are actually showing is respect and an expression of care. Adam Grant states, Many communicators try to make themselves look smart. Great listeners are more interested in making their audiences feel smart. As we have already stated, the real star of your communication is your receiver, your audience. Your whole communication is not about you, but above, about them. We can honor people's per perspectives as truth, even when they are different from ours, only when we are fully present. Yet sometimes this can be challenging as you might have the tendency to interrupt and not let the others talk. Brene Brown suggests uh, uh, the following. Um, really listen. Don't formulate your response while they are talking. If you have a great insight, hold it. Don't do that thing when uh, the listener starts nodding faster and faster, not because they are actually listening, but because they're trying to unconsciously signal to wrap up so they can talk. Let's not forget that daring leadership is about serving others, not ourselves. Now, the next two, that is power and warmth, uh, come together and should be particularly displayed when communicating with others. Power is displayed in various ways, for example, through influence on or authority over others, expertise, intelligence, sheer physical strength or a high social status. You are already in a certain position of power. You are a leader. Remember, we emphasize that this calls for more responsibility. 
Hence, it is important to know how to properly display it so that the others do not feel intimidated. In addition, it should reflect your core principles in life, your values. It becomes inevitable that power should be infused with warmth as we do not want the people to be detached from us and the, that will hamper create psychological safety and will hinder creativity and critical thinking. Warmth actually shows whether or not the power is going to be used in the people's favor. Cobain states being seen as warm uh, means that you are seen as benevolent, altruistic, caring, or willing to impact the world in a positive way. So, as we see, have seen, the charismatic behaviors are non-verbal behaviors. Doesn't it sound a bit paradoxical that while communicating, our body language has primacy? Aren't the words we say more important than the way we behave? By now you should know that we are feeling machines that think. Words are decoded by the neocortex and we know that they appear more recently than nonverbal communication, which directly appeals to our limbic system. A surprising fact is that the success of any type of communication heavily depends on the nonverbal behavior of the communicator. In Fox Cobain's words, nonverbal communication is hardwired in our brains much deeper than the most recent language processing abilities. She also claims words are grasped by people's cognitive minds, their logical side, which gets to work on understanding their meaning. Body language, in contrast, affects in an emotional level. It's this emotional level that you need to access in order to inspire others to follow, care for, or obey you. You should know by now that to overcome the obstacles that can handicap your personal charisma potential is to develop your emotional intelligence. Fox Cabin suggests a three-step process to skillfully handle any difficult experience. One should destigmatize the discomfort, neutralize negativity, and rewrite the reality. Destigmatize and dramatize uncom uncomfortable feelings by remembering that they are survival instincts and a natural part of the human experience. Think of others who have gone through this before, especially people you admire, and see yourself as part of a community of human beings experiencing the same feeling at the same moment. Neutralize unhelpful negative thoughts by remembering that the mind often distorts reality and filters your environment to highlight the negative. Think of your negative thoughts as graffiti on a wall. A wall. You may find it uh, an ugly sight, but just because you see it um, and an ugly sight doesn't mean you are an ugly person. Who you are should be a question of your values. Rewrite reality by considering a few helpful alternatives to your current perspective. For maximum effect, write down your new realities by hand and describe them in vivid detail. Now, what are some uh, lesson takeaways? Charisma is a skill that can be developed. It consists of three nonverbal behaviors, presence, power, and warmth. It is important to be fully present in your interactions with others and be an active listener rather than knower, interrupting all the time. Power and warmth displayed appropriately in communication can help build your charisma. Your nonverbal communication is more important than what you actually say, as it is hardwired in your brain. Hence, mastering it, that is, developing your emotional intelligence, will make you a charismatic communicator.